Okay, today we're going to be learning about how in ancient Egypt it was unified, both Upper and Lower Egypt. Now government ro arose in Egypt as well. A unified Egypt, around 3100 BC, Egypt's two major kingdoms, Upper and Lower Egypt, were combined into one. What types of services does your local government provide? Read on to find out about the government in ancient Egypt. In Egypt, as in Mesopotamia, skillful farming led to surpluses, or extra amounts, of food. This freed some people to do work as artisans instead of farmers. They wove cloth, made pottery, carved statues, or shaped copper into weapons and tools. As more goods became available, Egyptians traded with each other. Before long, Egyptian traders were carrying goods beyond Egypt's borders to Mesopotamia. There, they may have picked up ideas about writing and government. Writing is something that we've already talked about in class. Government is going to be a more specialized idea that comes up with the ancient Egyptians. So as government arises, uh, we're going to see that not only was there a need for the people to be governed by you know, a single leader or a group of leaders, but that government just didn't have power to just... Uh, their role was not just to be in power, uh, but it was also to enact laws and try to act um, for the benefit of the people. For example, in our society today, we have um, different services that your local government pays for. For example, your local firefighters or police officers. Um, those things come from local tax money and pay for those services in case um, you would ever need the help of the police or the help of the fire company. Um, another big source of taxes goes into what you're experiencing right now, it goes into public education. Public education is funded directly by the property taxes that your, uh, that your parents pay um, at, on their homes um, and on their property. And so you can see that it's not just about a somebody or an individual or group of people being in power, but there's a responsibility with that power to help try to care for the people that are in your kingdom or, in our case, in our community. The rise of government. The advances in farming, crafts, and trade created the need for government in Egypt. That's going to be an important point. It's going to answer a question for us, too. So make sure you pay attention to that one. Irrigation systems had to be built and maintained, and surplus grain had to be stored and passed out in times of need. In addition, disputes over land ownership had to be settled. Gradually, government emerged to plan and to, and to direct such activities. Remember, for ancient Egyptians, it was very important the flooding of the Nile. So if irrigation systems weren't maintained or they weren't built properly, it could affect all of us as farmers. The earliest rulers were village chiefs, and over time, a few strong chiefs united groups of villages into small kingdoms. The strongest of these kingdoms eventually overpowered the weaker ones, and by 4000 BC, Egypt was made up of two large kingdoms. In the Nile Delta, it was Lower Egypt. To the south, uh, to the south upriver, lay Upper Egypt. Egypt's ruling families. At about 3100 BC, the two kingdoms became one. Credit for this goes to King Narmer, also known as... We'll get back to some of this information in just a moment, sorry. Also known as Menes. As king of Upper Egypt, he led his armies north and took control of Lower Egypt. Many historians believe that King Narmer, King Menes, was actually the leader of the army that was located to the south in what we call Upper Egypt. I know that's confusing. We're going to explain that in just a moment on a map. So a lot of times the you know early kings or rulers um, are also um, are also uh, you know people in the military. Um, that were kind of like military war heroes. Um, even our own uh, George Washington, as the first president of the United States, 
was a war hero in the Revolutionary War. Norma ruled from Memphis, a city he built on the border between the two kingdoms. To symbolize the kingdom's unity, Norma wore a double crown. The helmet-like white crown represented Upper Egypt, and the open red crown represented Lower Egypt. Norma's kingdom held together long after his death. Members of his family passed the ruling power from father to son to grandson. Such a line of rulers from one family is called a dynasty. When a dynasty dies out, another takes its pl- another took it, its place. And over time, ancient Egypt would be ruled by 31 dynasties, which together lasted about 2,800 years. Historians group Egypt's dynasties into three main periods of time called kingdoms. The earliest period, called the Old Kingdom, was followed by the Middle Kingdom and then the New Kingdom. Each marked a long period of strong leadership and stability. So to explain this idea of the Upper and Lower Kingdom, here we have a map. You can see to the north we have Lower Egypt. And to the south, we have Upper Egypt. Now remember, the, fly, the Nile flows from the south to the north. And since it flows from the south to the north, that's where we get our names Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt. Upper Egypt, think of Upper Egypt as upstream, and Lower Egypt is downstream. There were two crowns to signify the rulers of Lower and Upper Egypt. This was the crown of Upper Egypt, and over here, this is King Menes, or Narmer. And he's going to travel. Both of these are, are became pretty large civilizations, Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. And what is going to happen is King Narmer is going to travel to the north, and he's going to overtake the people here. But when he overtakes them, he wants to signify, it, it's not that he just wants to overtake them, he wants to unify everybody as uh, under one Egyptian leadership. So what's going to happen is Narmer, as he combines these two, um, Lower Egypt and Upper Egypt, he's going to have a crown that signifies both. You can see this red crown is the crown that signifies Lower Egypt. And the white crown is the one that signifies Upper Egypt. So these two um, combined, and we now have an example of a unified Egypt. Uh, Many Egyptologists feel that this was the first, um, they weren't called pharaohs yet, but this would have been the first actual king of a unified Egypt.